Hello everyone, and laissez le bon temps rouler, let the good times roll, here, on episode 4 of Voodoo's Brew. I am Voodoo51292, and with me is the man who never lets the good times end, Brandon. I never do. That's how you make an intro. <laughs> so how are you today, sir? Are you still in one piece? You're not, you didn't break anything off, you're not an unexpected father. None of those things happened in the past two weeks. Well, the father thing is a possibility, but still waiting on the things, still waiting on the test for that. Yeah, I understand. Scared, but you know, I understand. Those things can can get out of hand. These things can happen. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> speaking of unplanned pregnancies, I assume that this past week in New Orleans there are probably quite a few unplanned pregnancies that have just begun. Jesus. Since this is the post Mardi Gras episode of Voodoo's Brew, Mardi Gras was this past week, and as I said, there's probably lots of unplanned pregnancies, probably lots of people in jail that <laughs> wish that they weren't in jail or don't remember why they were in jail. But uh, yeah, it happened. Oh, in massive amounts, it happened. So anyway, for the past week, I was off of school through Wednesday, basically. I only had one class Wednesday, and my t my professor canceled it. Um, so that was pretty nice. And for me, that's pretty much what Mardi Gras is about, just having time off. I don't really go to parades much. I did go to one. I'm not, not anymore. I, I've done the whole parade thing. I A few years in a row, I... I did the parades and walked on the street, did all that stuff. And then, uh, funny story, there was a shooting. I don't know how funny that is, but there was a shooting across the street from me on Mardi Gras Day a couple of years ago where these guys shot like seven people across the street from me, and that was pretty much it. I was I was pretty much done after that. Jesus Christ, seven people? Yep. Well, you know, when you're all packed in there like that, you start shooting and... But the interesting thing about it was no one was no one was fatally shot. The only guy that died was an old man who was next to it and had a heart attack. But nobody was actually fatally wounded. Wow. So I don't I know. Really they were, he really did get shot. They were they were either really bad shots or their guns were really bad because they shot seven people and didn't kill a single one. Which of course is they had fucking squirt guns. It's great, but well, it didn't sound like squirt guns. <laughs> I can tell you that. But I did go to one parade this year. I went on Monday night, Lundi Gras, the night before Mardi Gras, to Orpheus. And the only reason I went is because my parents have some very rich friends that own a house that's right on St. Charles Avenue, which is basically the the, the very upscale street in Uptown that all the big parades go, you know, roll down. So that's the only reason mm -hmm. I went to that one. That was interesting. I actually did have a lot of fun, mainly because I had... A house, meaning I had food to eat that was free. I had a place to piss, which was exciting. I had a place to go inside and relax if I wanted, um, which you don't get if you're just actually on the parade route. You, there's really not anywhere to eat or if you want to piss. You have to wait in a long ass line for a porta potty, and it's just unpleasant. I bet people just piss on the sidewalk. Oh yes, and are subsequently arrested. But uh, I saw Brett Michaels was the Grand Marshal of Orpheus. That was very exciting. <laughs> I pretty much have been waiting all my life to see Brett Michaels. I know that's that's been a lot of people's goal in life. It's mine. It's still mine. I know. I'm very happy that I was able to do that. And very sad for you that you couldn't share that. So did you actually meet him? Well, no. He's riding on a float. So it's very difficult to meet him. Like he wasn't off the float and like just fucking signing shit? No. Why would he be off the float? Well, I mean like after the parade? Well, I don't... The parade rolled past us. I don't know where the hell it went. I mean, it went uh, to where it ended. Well, I don't know how the fuck it goes. Never been to one of those. Yeah. Well, I saw him and then on the float after him, they had Harry Connick Jr. He's very iconic in, in, in New Orleans. Famous jazz musician turned actor. He's now, I believe, on Law & Order SVU. He was an actor in many movies. After him was Hilary Swank, which most people, I'm sure, know. 
very famous actress, and then Mariska Hargitay, who is, I believe, Harry Connick Jr.'s partner on Law and Order SVU. They were all on the float after, and then after them was Cindy Lauper, who is a weirdo, and she's, you know, the girl sings, girls just want to have fun, and other songs like that, and she was kind of a weirdo, but, uh, but yeah. That was pretty exciting. Very amazing cast and crew of people. But uh so so what do you think of this all star lineup? Is this something that excites you? Is that something that would pull you just to go to the parade just to see these amazing people? Oh, just Cindy Lopper. <laughs> I know, that's that's what got me. There was also some uh, apparently other celebrities. I had no idea who they were. Um, they said their names, and they looked like freaking teeny bop. Like, I don't know who the hell they were. They weren't anybody I recognized. But, uh, yeah, I managed to not get hit in the face by anything that they were throwing, so that was an accomplishment. That's, that is a very good accomplishment. Because that, that's, that's, you know, that's a very big risk. You don't understand that's my this. Goal, that's my goal every day, not to get hit in the face. Oh, I know, but the, the chances are greatly increased at these parades. Because what you got to understand is, and there's a float with two stories. There are two level floats with people standing on the top and bottom. And these guys are just right. going at it, just throwing out everything they've got on their float. And these guys, they don't just, th you know, toss stuff. Like, they throw things like a, a major league pitcher. I don't, know, I don't know why they do this. I don't know if it's to injure you. I don't know if it's to keep you awake. I don't really know what the point is. But they throw very hard. And the problem with it is, is it's pitch black. And you're trying to concentrate on about 10 people on one side of the float all throwing things. And it's it's very very possible that you'll get hit in the face. Because you can't pay attention to everything that's going on. And what's worse is when it's cold. Because then when the beads hit you, it's like the most painful thing that you've ever felt. These hard beads Has being... Has this happened to you? Oh, many times. I haven't got hit in the face necessarily, but I've been hit in the hands many times by big beads when it's freezing cold outside. Being thrown yeah. 100 miles an hour, and uh, it's not uh, it's not very enjoyable for me. Sounds like a fucking health hazard. Oh, it's Mardi Gras is basically an, a 90% health hazard. <laughs> Between dealing with all the people around you, the alcohol, the beads being thrown... The horse manure that you must carefully avoid in the street. Have you uh, been witness to uh, any fights during Mardi Gras? None that I can remember except the shooting. I would say that's a big fight. Nothing yeah, really. That's a big fight, but I mean, like a fist fight. I'm sure there have been. I I don't remember any. I know my girlfriend went to parades Saturday night, Sunday night. She said Sunday night they were fighting by her, which doesn't surprise me. Um, because I mean, anytime you involve alcohol, it's people are gonna fight. But you know, nothing really exciting happened. Uh, which is the way I like to keep it from Mardi Gras. We're on Monday when we went. It's pretty low, low, low. You know, low key. I didn't really see anything uh, to report, which is kind of surprising. <laughs> Going to a Mardi Gras parade, you think that there'd be more interesting stories, but I really, I don't have any. Some broken fist fights and. Pissing and shit yes, everywhere. Freaking boobies flying around, but no, I didn't. Tips. I did not experience this on Monday. So I think if I if I would do parades again, it would have to be at that guy's house. I don't think I would ever do a parade again where I would just be walking on the street because it's not worth it to me. Yeah, it sounds like a fucking pain in the ass. It is. Plus, you have to find a place to park. Which is the worst yeah. thing ever. And then you have to go deal with that all day. I mean, I got better things to do. It's a vacation. I'm going to spend it relaxing. I'm not going to spend it stranded on the side of the road, you know, for an entire day with nowhere to go to the bathroom, nowhere to, you know, it's just not worth it to me. Sounds fucking miserable. It, 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 it can be. So, I'll leave that up Plus, to the other people. Fucking Cindy Lauper is one of the fucking stars there. I mean, yeah, I guess you can't pass that up. Yeah. I guess the combination of her and and Brett Michaels would be enough that you'd brave the elements yeah. and you know risk life That's and limb to see them. 
that was the whole point of me going. If if Cindy Lauper hadn't been there, I would have just stayed home. Yeah. I mean, you gotta go if she's there, you know? So anyway, I made it through alive. Everything was okay. Like I said, nothing too exciting to report. But I did hear that there was a shooting, I want to say Saturday night. What the fuck? So, at Mardi Gras just, you know, it's a great opportunity for New Orleans to live up to all the bad reputation it gets. It's just an excellent opportunity to make our city look like shit. It's just an excellent opportunity to get fucking shot. Yeah, it's pretty much a good opportunity to do anything bad in the city. So it certainly doesn't help our people's perception of us when it's Mardi Gras time. But, you know, I guess there's nothing you can really do about that. No, there's not. But oh well, it's still a great tradition. It still means well. It's just the people have turned it into something that's not innocent and doesn't mean well. It's not necessarily the holiday's fault, so it's not the crew's fault, it's not the parade's fault, it's the people's fault, like everything else, but that's life, so. Alright, so moving on from Crazy Mardi Gras Week, one thing we do want to say is that for a game, we are going to be playing game March 20th, am I correct in the release date of this game? Yeah. That one is coming out March 20th. Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. And initially we had four or yeah, four people to do this co-op, because it is a four-player co-op game, is my understanding. We're gonna do this on the Xbox 360, but it seems as if one of the individuals has pulled out from doing the game with us. Rather unexpectedly. Yeah. So we are open to opening this up for if anyone wants to do a co-op session of Operation Raccoon City on the 360. But there, there's obviously going to be a little bit of, of, you know, conditions here. First of all, we're going to be doing it on release week. Yes. Assuming that everything works out and we don't have another episode like we had this week, which we'll get into. But assuming that everything works out, we will be playing that game on release week. And you have to be, obviously, flexible with the time schedule and be able to sit down and play a good amount of time of this. Because we do need to beat it within, you know, that week. Um, so if anyone's just interested, let us know. Contact myself, Brandon, or friend Travis, who we're all doing it. And uh, I'll I'll just link everybody's channel in the description. It'll be easier that way. Just get in touch with us and if you have any interest, and then we'll go into more specifics with you individually if it'll work out. So just throwing that out there. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. Should be fun. Should be. All right. So other than that, we have some interesting topics we're going to discuss today. First of all, Brandon and I are going to talk a little bit about the unfortunate start it seems to the 2012 gaming year with some really not good games so far that have been coming out we're, ex we're going to express our displeasures with that and how that's been going over on our channels we will talk a little bit about our channels what we've been up to which kind of ties into this things we're hoping for in the future of this year and things we're going to be doing um we're going to talk a little bit about there there is an interesting thing that i've just heard of about an interesting proposed video game tax in the state of Oklahoma, which was just recently uh, destroyed. They they basically closed the bill down, but it was it was talking about some interesting topics. So I'd like to get into that a little bit and just you know express our opinions on that. Uh, Brandon went out today and bought an HD camera, which he's very excited about. So we'll talk a little bit about that and uh, some other gaming news and things that have been going on. So I guess now what we should do is talk a little bit about <laughs> the amazing start to 2012. Amazing. So Brandon, if you had to give a rating right now, a letter grade for the games so far that have been released in the first two months of 2012, what would your grade be? Between a D minus and fucking feeling like a fucking dumbass I do I just I'm fucking pissed like <laughs> what the fuck like I don't understand like yeah I don't, I don't um, 
I feel doubly bad for Brandon because I don't think he's played any good game. I've at least played The Darkness 2, which was a, which was a good game. I enjoyed that game quite a bit. That was the first game I played. I was excited about it. Uh, but yeah, since then, just no. Let's just say uh, I haven't finished any fucking uh, playthrough on my channel yet. This is true. And I played two games so far. And I haven't finished those games either. Yeah. So. First of all, and I know that there's there's been other releases this year that neither one of us has touched. This is Final Fantasy XIII 2, although I did not hear glowing reviews about that game either. Soul Calibur right. Five, which is a fighting game, so I don't know if it necessarily counts. It only counts, I would think, to a small group of people who... Well, I won't say small, but to the group of people who do enjoy fighting games. Yeah. Um, so we haven't touched those games, but other than that, I guess we should start with the first game... That kind of made it on our shit list, which would be Twisted Metal. Jesus Christ. So Twisted uh, Metal is, it seems to be a very polarizing game, because it seems like either you love the game or you hate the game. And there doesn't really seem to be any middle ground. <laughs> I mean, you've got, basically, here's what you've got, okay? You've got the people who played the original Twisted Metals, in the 90s, on PlayStation, okay, and I guess early 2000s, they released a few more, who play this game that came out this year and love it, because basically what they're saying is it's classic Twisted Metal gameplay from the 90s, it's exactly what they remember it being, and, you know, now it's redone in HD, you know, so people love it. Then you've got the people like Brandon and I, who, sure, I played, I, I dabbled in Twisted Metal in the 90s, okay? But I'm not really like a fan of Twisted Metal. I never really sat down and played a Twisted Metal. So you've got all these people, these basically new people to the franchise, right? And we're yeah. all playing the game, and we think it sucks. We think it it's awful. Sucks. So, Brandon, what? I guess there's a lot of things we can talk about here, but I would, I just guess, what's your general overview of this game? What did you think about it, and why? That's why generally did you think this? Well, I think that the game's graphics are not up to par with the games that have come out so far. You know, you know, years past on PlayStation, um, they look they look kind of like you know, fucking uh, shitty, and uh, the the story's fucking weird, and there's no really story to it. It's just fucking you have to help this guy kill. Well, the only the only story I played was for um, Sweet Tooth, and you're trying to help him get to this his, this girl that he wants to kill. Like, what the f why the fuck would I want to help him kill somebody? And uh, the gameplay is frustrating as fuck because they have this ability where they can shoot this fucking electricity and stop your car. So you have to fucking pound the buttons and restart your car, and it's just frustrating as fuck. And uh, the the only good thing I can say about it is when it does work and it's and it's like um and it's not frustrating you it's it's actually kind of fun because you can like you there's destruction and there's fucking explosions and you're shooting shit and like you're blowing cars up but that's very few and far in between and pretty much the the whole time you're playing the game you're gonna be frustrated if you're not a classic metal twisted metal fan yeah well i don't know there's so much there's so many things i could say about the game but Basically, here's here's the, here's the situation with Twisted Metal, okay? They the people who developed Twisted Metal, and I'm not exactly sure the studio behind it. I don't I don't know who's the actual developers of Twisted. I know David Jaffe's behind it. I don't know who he works for. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. I think it was Eat Sleep Play. Eat Sleep, okay. Whatever the hell that is. Bottom yeah. line is, is that these people who developed this game, okay, seem like they designed the game for the classic fans. Right. It doesn't seem like they at all wanted to introduce a new era of Twisted Metal gamers. Now, the only the only thing I can see where they wanted to reintroduce people is the, is the fact that the plot is pretty much a reboot. It's not a sequel to anything, and of course the game is just called Twisted Metal. It's not, you know, it's basically a reboot. But... As far as the gameplay, all right. First of all, there's no tutorial, and I talked about this a lot in my game review. But there's yeah. no tutorial for the controls when you start the game, right? Yeah, 
there's no, there's no, it's not, what I mean to say is it's not integrated into the campaign. I mean, when you start the campaign of pretty much any game in 2012, right? Yeah. They have a tutorial that at least explains to you the controls. Now, there's some people who, who get angry and say, well, what do you expect? The game's going to hand feed you the, the game, blah, blah, blah. Look, there's a difference, okay, between hand feeding you the game and just telling you what the basic controls are. Right. Hand feeding or, or holding your hand through the game to me means you're doing a boss fight, okay, and they tell you exactly step by step what to do, exactly how to kill this boss. To me, that's holding your hand and guiding you through and being a baby. If you just tell me what pressing a button does, that is not babying you. That's fucking telling you how to play the game. Like, That's telling you how to operate the game. Okay? Yeah. So, I played the, the majority of the campaign not knowing the controls. Not knowing, like, 50% of the controls. Play. Okay? But then I find out from people commenting that there's a tutorial system that is separate from the campaign that you have to select in the single player menu that's not part of the campaign. Here's the problem though. It's like the last option in the first player menu. So if you don't know that there's a training mode, if you're not looking for a training mode, you're not going to see it because most people just hit new game, okay, blah blah blah, they just hurry through. And the first option when you hit new game is, you know, play new game. So of course you're not going to look any further than that. You're just going to hit that and go into the game. And my problem with that is the game doesn't come up with a text box. Like, okay, I even understand that. I understand if you want to have a separate tutorial mode from the game. But what it should do is it should pop up with a text box saying, you know, you should complete the, you should consider completing the training mode before jumping into the game and give an option to skip it. That way people who have played the game and know the controls can skip it and just go into the game and those who don't say, oh wait, there's a training mode, let me do this. And here's the funny part about the whole thing. There's an achievement for doing the training mode. What the fuck? Why is there an achievement for doing the training mode if you don't even tell people, if you don't even make it obvious that there's a training mode? I don't know, man. They should, I still don't, still don't know that there's a fucking training mode. They should tell you that. They should tell you there's a training mode, especially if they're going to put a freaking achievement. It's almost like saying, yeah, we know we hid the training mode kind of on purpose, and if you do the training mode, we reward you by giving you an achievement. Like, what the hell is that about? This is a very fucking frustrating game, dude. The game just doesn't make any sense. And it's basic. it is. It's basically a game that's in the 90s. And for people who love the Twisted Metal games in the 90s, who know how to play the game, that's great. But for all the people who haven't, they're not expecting to play a game that their gameplay is completely 90s. Now, I know they've changed a couple of things. It's not exactly the same gameplay. They've apparently like the garage thing is new. They didn't used to have that. Whatever. But you know, we just you can keep a game having classic gameplay while incorporating changes and things over the past twenty years that have made video games better and less frustrating for people to play. Right. I mean, why do you think that that then back then, you know, not a whole lot of people played games? It's because back then. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people were turned off by the fact that sometimes the games were just brutal and difficult and really frustrating to play. And now that there's a whole new audience of gamers, you know, because a lot of changes have been made to games over the past 20 years, in my opinion, to make them less frustrating. Now, obviously, maybe I'm slanted because I'm a part of a younger generation or whatever, but that's just, that's the way I feel about it. So... It should. I mean, the problem is, though, is, like, the game, at its core, is fun. Like, the concept is fun, and it's unique and different. I mean, I don't know another game where you can drive around in crazy-looking cars playing as these sadistic characters blowing the hell out of one another with crazy weapons. I mean... It's just, the controls, they don't explain them, and there's fucking 5,000 controls, yeah. and, like, they're so... They're so intricate. The controls are. They're complicated. Now, apparently, they're they're less intricate than they used to be. Apparently, it almost used to be like a fighting game, from what I'm to understand, to where some of the special abilities, you actually had to do, like, moves into your 
analog stick and hit a button similar to a fighting game, like doing moves, double tapping buttons. I mean, apparently that's what it used to be. Now, but even so, even the controls now are still, in my opinion, a little too intricate for your average average person just trying to jump into the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. And they there's there are other controller layout options, but they don't explain to you what what it does. They don't explain to you what the other controller layouts, what buttons they change. They don't explain it, so I don't know what the point exactly is. And uh, you're probably pissed because you spent ten bucks on the online. Yep, I had to spend ten dollars to buy the online pass, and the online play doesn't work. <laughs> or I'll say it rarely works. When you can find a game. The online, in my opinion, is the best part of Twisted Metal, but I could only find, when I sat down to play my set, I could only find one game that it let me join. I played one match, and then I literally, my next video is 12 and a half minutes of me sitting there, trying to get into another match, any way I know how, and the game just not letting me. That's balls. So I spent $10 for nothing. I and and I don't I don't quite understand that. I mean, I'm still not I'm still against this whole ten dollar online pass thing, but I oh, guess I that's, too, that's another conversation for another day. But yeah. especially, I don't know. Especially these games like Twisted Metal, when the online is really what's supposed to sell the game, yet you have an online like you charge an online pass. I, I just. I don't want to get too much into it. I'm just aggravated that I spent ten dollars for an online pass that didn't let me play because the servers don't work. That's, That's really annoying. Stupid. And people wanted to get on me. They're like, "Well, David Jaffe says it's not his fault. It's Sony's fault." Look, bottom line is, when I play a game, or especially when I review a game, okay, people don't care whose fault it is. You know what I mean? People aren't gonna if people go out and spend sixty dollars and they, they go home, they try to play the game online, it doesn't work. Do you really think that they're gonna sit there and say, Well, it's not you know, I spent sixty dollars, but it's not the developer of the game's fault. It's Sony's fault that it doesn't work, so therefore I'm less pissed off that I spent sixty dollars. Do you think people no. care? No. When I review a game, I have to say, okay. I don't care whose fault it is. Bottom line is, when you go spend your hard-earned money money on this game and go to play it online, it's not going to work. Now, if that's the game developer's fault, if that's Sony's fault, in a way, it is the game developer's fault because they're the ones that signed an exclusive contract with Sony. And if Sony's online service don't work, then don't sign a freaking contract with them. Yeah. I mean, I, but bottom line is, is that it affects the rating of my game because I rate the game on the quality of it is. And if people can't go, if people cannot play the play the multiplayer of the game, that comes off the game score. I'm sorry about that, but I can't give the game points for online play if it doesn't work, regardless of whose fault it is. So I, I don't get people's complaints. I don't either. I mean, I you know. I don't see why what difference it makes whose fault it is as far as what I rate the game. I, I don't I don't understand how that's how that makes a difference. But anyway, do you have any do you have any final comments on Twisted Metal? Well, yeah. Before I sent it back to GameFly, I shit on it. <laughs> that's okay. It shit on me too. It shit on you back. It's the feelings mutual. I stopped playing the single player campaign. I couldn't take it anymore. Now I did I did actually sit there and watch DSP's playthrough of it because I was interested in in like some of the events that they that they had. Uh, I was actually kind of interested in the storylines. They were pretty interesting, even though they weren't in depth. Because at the end of each storyline, not to spoil anything, but it's actually a running theme to, through Twisted Metal, where pretty much nobody gets the ending they really want. It's always sick and sadistic twist ending because of Calypso. So it was interesting to see all three of these characters get screwed over. How Calypso was going to bend what they said. Um, so I was interested in it, but I wasn't interested enough to sit there and grind through hours and hours of endless gameplay to get there. I just I wasn't going to do that. Seriously. So I didn't think it was worth it. So anyway, that's Twisted Metal. If you want, you know, what I my full 
rant on it, but I really thought about the whole game. You can watch my game review. It should explain everything. So, yeah. So, I guess we'll move on now from Twisted Metal to the the last game that we had the pleasure of playing. Jesus Christ. Which was last night, actually. On We're filming this on, on well, technically, it's the morning of Sunday the 26th, at least where I live. But really, it's kind of Saturday night. Bottom line is we played the game on Friday night, okay? Now, just to list some of the things that we went through with this game, okay? First of all, there was a whole <sighs> trouble, fight, conundrum of me even getting this game, okay? okay? I finally get the game. Then, through playing the game, we go from freezing, the game freezing on us, to... Basically to the point where the game is so ridiculously hard and makes you so angry that myself, Brandon, and Travis, who are the three people playing this game, we actually got so upset that we started to turn on each other in the game and get mad at each other for the gameplay. That's how infuriating this game is. It actually makes you get mad at your fellow man over the game. It actually, actually mindfucks you. It puts you in such a bad mood that you're just angry at everyone. Pretty much. I was yelling at Travis because he was, I don't know what he was doing. He was trying to run off the, the thing and kill himself. He was shooting me at Brandon, or sometimes he'd run out of cover and, and get shot. Brandon was upset about what, it was bad. It was just, it was a bad, it, it, the game turns you against your fellow neighbor. And Pretty we were much. talking about the amazing game, which is Syndicate. So, <laughs> so first of all, Gamefly completely screwed me, okay? And I, I talked about this in my last video, my update video, whatever, so I won't go too much in depth about it. But basically, I wasn't going to get the game. It didn't look like I was going to be able to get the game. So I went out to Blockbuster last night as a last-ditch effort to try to get this game because I came home for the weekend and the only Blockbuster I know that's open is actually by my house. And they had the game. So I rented it. I was really excited. I was going to do it. We, you know, we were going to do a co-op. Now, I was under a mis misimpression because I thought that the game was only one campaign that could be played co-op or single player. I didn't, I didn't realize that there were two separate campaigns. Did you realize this? I, I didn't know this before I got the game. Did you know that? No, I found out right before we started. I didn't even know this. I, because from the demo, you wouldn't know that. Yeah. The demo doesn't clearly explain that there's actually two campaigns. So I didn't, I didn't realize this. So anyway, the co-op mode is basically... It's almost... It's, <laughs> I, hate to, I always hate to make this comparison. But it's almost in the same format as Brink was. Where you've got basically maps. You've got challenge maps, so to speak. Where you play co-op. Alright? It's a shooter. You play co-op and you basically go throughout these levels and you'll be clearing out enemies. Sometimes you'll have objectives you need to do, like move this thing from point A to point B, protect this for a certain amount of time. And so we sit down and we start playing, right? And the first level, it's fine. It's okay. We're having fun. The graphic, First of all, the graphics on the game are amazing. Yeah, they are. I will say that. They're outstanding. All right. So we're sitting there playing, and, and we're, we get to the same part, because actually the first level of the co-op thing is actually the demo level that Brandon and I played, and you'll remember that the game froze on us in the demo, right? At, this, at, the, at the final thing of the campaign where you had to kill the marine guy. Fucking heck, man. The, the colonel, I don't know what the hell he is, he's annoying. Yeah, the fuck. And... We didn't think anything of it. Freezing, obviously, because it was a demo. Okay. Alright. So we get to this part of the actual game, and the game freezes. It freezes all three of our consoles. Not just one, but all three consoles. Now, you know what gets me, though, is you turn on the game, and there's no fucking patch Correct. for the game. There was no patch. Now, keep in mind, this was, what, three days after release? That we played this for the first time? No patch. Not even a day one patch. I, I know. What game have you ever played in the past three years that didn't have a day one patch? 
They all do because they they because they listen to feedback or they're supposed to from the demo or the betas that they release and make a patch accordingly to go along. That's why they have beta tests and demos. At least that's why I thought they had them right. to generate interest for the game and to identify any bugs in the retail release. Because basically, it seems like what they do for demos is they just cut out a section of the actual retail release most of the time. And therefore, if there's problem, in fact, the demo for Syndicate was the exact same first level as in the game. There was no difference, which I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. So basically, they cut the first stage out of the main game and put it in the demo, but they didn't bother to test it apparently. So it well, froze. They did, but they don't—they didn't give a shit what the fucking feedback was. Well, they didn't play test it themselves, is what I'm saying. Because if they play tested it themselves, they would have released the patch, but they didn't. They just let it go on. So anyway, okay. it freezes, right? So we're like, okay. So we turn off our console, we restart it. These things happen, right? Mm -hmm. We get back into playing, we go through the first level. Alright, I don't know if it froze on us again in the same level. I, I don't think it did, actually. I think it. I think we were able to play no. the whole first, whole first level the second time around. Yeah. So we did that, and then we go to the second level. We're like, okay, you know, it must have been a one-time thing. No big deal. So we go to the second level. We play for a little bit. Game freezes. We have to exit out, turn off all of our systems, restart. We play the second level, get a little bit further. Game locks up. We're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is ridiculous. So we sit there, play, I think, and it keeps on, it just keeps freezing. We play for a little bit, game locks up. All all of our consoles, not just one, all of them. So we're like, we're, we're to the point now where we're just like, screw it. We're not going to sit here and fight all day playing this stupid game that doesn't even work because it keeps freezing. So we were at a point where I had to take a break anyway. I had to unload the footage on my camera. So we were kind of taking a break deciding what we were going to do. If we were going to try to continue playing this game. Because keep in mind, Travis bought this game, right? Paid 60 bucks for it. Fucking bought it. So we're sitting there trying to decide what we're going to do. And Travis comes back on the mic. And he says, listen, I went to shacknews.com, which is where, of course, I get all of my gaming news. And he said that they, they think that the problem is the fact that there that there's a bug on the Xbox 360, okay, with parties. Now let me get this right, okay? On the co-op mode of the game, when the entire <laughs> multiplayer of Xbox Live revolves around parties, there's a bug where it doesn't work with parties and it freezes every single person's console who's in the party? What? Okay. How can you have a bug like that? Dude, they don't test their shit. No. Obviously. Like, but I mean, of all things, in the co-op mode, there's a bug with parties. It's the co-op. How do you think people are going to be playing this game? <sighs> I don't understand what's wrong with these people. But anyway, so... We said, okay, well, we're going to try it again without parties. So we go in, we just join the game, we're not in a party on Xbox Live, alright? And it fixed the problem. It doesn't freeze ever again. But that just created a bigger problem, because we get to stage 3, okay? And this is just when it just hit the fan. We got to the final room of stage 3. Now keep in mind, at this point, we're all angry, we're all mad because the game's been freezing all night. The game's been brutally difficult to this point anyway. We finally get to this area, and it is impossible. Literally, dude. It's not possible to be, at least not with three people. It's impossible. Basically, what it is, is it's a room, okay? A circular room where you've got these, I don't know, how many were there? Five? Four? Five? There had to be at least five. Five? Five what? Five enemies. Yeah. I think that's how many. There were five of these doctors, it looked like, but they, they were like, they weren't. They were agents or something. I don't know. They looked like, like they were yeah. wearing lab coats. Yeah. I don't know what they were. Doesn't matter. The point is they're wearing white lab coats, okay? And they all have a life bar, and they've got insane weapons, like chain guns, ridiculously heavy rifles. It's insane. So you're thinking, okay, we just got to clean out this room, right? No. 
you shoot these guys, and it seems like very often you do no damage to them at all. When you do damage, they have the ability to heal one another. And it's not just that they can heal one another, but they can do it instantly. They can heal one another while you're shooting them. So you'll be shooting them depleting their life. The more you shoot them, they just regenerate their life instantly. You're like, what the hell am I supposed to do? So even that, okay, could be understandable. Here's the thing that's not, though. When you finally shoot a guy and his life actually runs out, that's not enough. You have to go up to the, per the person that you killed and click right thumbstick to execute them. That's the only way they can die. Now keep in mind, every time that you down one of their teammates, what do the AI do? They all crowd around him with their guns. And they revive him within five seconds. So it's not it's not physically possible to beat this really. So I I don't know what were your thoughts on this room? What I mean, Dude, like you go through all this shit, you're fuck, you're pissed. Like we we went through shit before the game. We're trying to get the game and shit. We're like you know we're we're like getting frustrated with game fly and everything. So. We're already a little, little aggravated, and then we're like, we're happy, we know we got, you got the game and everything we're playing. It, it freezes, we're pissed, we're like, we're almost raging. We get through to this room, and like, you down a guy, and all his fucking partners trot around you with their chain guns and start shooting you as you're executing. I'm like, what the fuck am I, I I'm defenseless, I'm executing the guy, so how am I supposed to fucking defend myself? Yeah, you have no which, chance. Yeah, you have no chance. You're you're executing a guy and they're they're pounding on you with their fucking chain guns, so and you 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 get downed and the guy gets revived. So how I don't I don't know who the fuck tested this room and said yeah it's good to go. I mean what the fuck? Well, and it's like okay maybe you can say well we only had three people if we had four, but even with four people man I don't see how it's possible. It's not. Even with four it's people not. you could have six people. But the bottom line is you have to get next to this guy to execute him, and there's no way. As soon as you step into their line of fire, you're almost instantly killed. So I, I don't understand. Don't know what the, the goal of that level, of that room was. What I was don't, the fucking goal? Even if you had eight people, I, I just don't see how... I, I don't you're know, so man. overpowered. And it was the third stage of nine. So I don't even want to imagine... What the later stages were like. Dude. I would have killed myself. I really don't know. Like, I don't know what I could have... And we just said, we're done. Because we were so angry at that point. We were angry at the game. Pissed off at one another. It was late. We were in a bad mood. And we're just <laughs> we're like, tired. we're done. We're Like, we're not going to keep playing this. It's awful. So once again, we have to quit in the middle of a playthrough basically. Yeah. And it's just really frustrating. So, bottom line out of all of this, okay, the whole thing that we're trying to get to, talking about Twisted Metal, Syndicate, and now keep in mind I have not played the single player of Syndicate. I will be doing it at some point, but keep in mind I had to rent this from Blockbuster, so I actually brought the game back tonight because they start charging you two dollars a day extra Per day that you keep it out past the due date, which is only a day. And I have to go back to school. So if I had kept it this week, I'd have to pay like 10 bucks in late fees. Okay. And I'm not doing that. So I brought the game back. Whenever I get the game back from Gamefly, I will do the single player campaign and just pray God that it's better than that. And that I can slightly redeem the game. So I can't make a final judgment on Syndicate yet, although I can make a judgment on the co-op of it. Right? So basically... The point is, what the hell is the deal with all these bad games? Dude, I don't know. And it's not even that, but Azura's Wrath, which is a game that I was intending on playing, from all reports I've heard, is not a good game either. It's apparently a giant cutscene with quick time events for six hours. That's I'm the fine. extent of Azura's Wrath. So, I don't, I, I I'm not even doing... Overs from last year. I'm not even doing Azura's Wrath anymore. I've decided against it. That sounds like a big waste of time. It is. It's a giant waste of time when I could be doing more productive things. I'm not going to play Azura's Wrath because I don't want to sit there and play a... Uh, I only wanted to play the game because it looked different. The art style was unique. 
it look like a different kind of game, except for the fact that it's not really a game. From what I'm hearing, it's a it's an interactive movie with a subpar plot. Yep. So I'm not gonna sit there and play that. I'm sorry. So, what is the deal with all these bad games coming out? Man, I I don't know. They're getting lazy. I mean, I I like to compare this time you know, of the year this year as compared to last year, 2011. I mean, you already had one of the best games of 2011 come out by this time already last year, which was Dead Space 2. Right. right. You had Little Big Planet 2, which I didn't play, but was apparently pretty good. Okay. And you were just on the cusp, in March at least, of having all kinds of good games coming out in March of that year. Now, keep in mind, we do have Mass Effect 3 coming out on the 6th of March. But it's just this year compared to 2011, it just so far there's no comparison. It's like dog shit versus a pile of gold. <laughs> that's one way of looking at it. So it's like we got one game that's very just extremely frustrating and twisted metal. Then you have another game that barely works and actually turns you hostile against your co op partners because you're so angry. And it's not like we didn't try. We sat there and played that last room time after time after time after time after time after time until we just literally couldn't take it anymore. We're about to kill ourselves. <laughs> we tried. We did everything we knew how to do. So, I, so anyway, bottom line is we're hoping for better games to come out in this year. I mean, I'm really hoping that the, the these other games we have coming up are a lot better than what we've played so far. I'm praying. I don't know, though. I don't know. There's no way to judge. There's no way to judge that. Say Mass Effect 3 that neither one of us are playing during release week. Nope. So I'm looking at my game queue right now from Gamefly, right? And, I don't know, it's like there's a lot of these games that should be good, but who really knows? I mean, Binary Domain coming out this week, I don't know what to expect from. Not general. I don't foresee that being a great game by any means. Nope. I foresee it being okay at best. It could be really bad, and that would be excellent considering what we've just been playing. You've got Silent Hill Downpour, I've never played a Silent Hill game. So I'm not sure how that's going to be. And we've got Operation Raccoon City, which I don't know about. I think the most fun we're going to have in that game is just because we're playing a co-op. Yeah. I mean, that's what's going to be, because we can make fun of it if it's stupid. But then you do have some good games. It looks like you've got Prototype 2. You've got Starhawk. You've got Max Payne 3. You've got Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. And then you've got some other games coming out later in the year, like Spec Ops The Line, Darksiders 2, and the list goes on and on, right? Um, so I don't know. I'm just, I I pray that we, I know Brandon's just praying for a game that he can get through. Yeah, I want a complete fucking playthrough on my channel. So... It's been pretty bad. Just disappointing. Disappointing. Very disappointing. Hence why I don't spend sixty dollars on games very much anymore because I don't want to get screwed. Yeah. It's only a good thing that came out of it. We just you know, we didn't get screwed. Except for Travis. Yeah, except for Travis. He spent sixty bucks <laughs> on it. I'm send a dick. Send a dick. That yeah. sounds like a Valentine's Day treat. Send a dick. Oh, it isn't. It really isn't. <laughs> Call 1-800-SYNDA-DICK. And we'll you ship your loved one a copy of Syndicate for the Xbox 360. Yeah. With the single player mode taken out, so all you can play is the co-op. <laughs> which doesn't work with parties on Xbox Live. Which is the only, only reason we buy it for Xbox. 
<sighs> so anyway, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about this. Do you have any other comments you'd like to add? Fuck Syndicate and Twisted Metal is a piece of shit. Wise, wise words from a wise man. Yep. So anyway, enough about this negativity. It's putting me in a bad mood. It's harshing my mellow. Or anything else <laughs> that you want to say. So let's move on to something that I just recently found out that I found quite interesting. Okay. And this regards a proposed tax in the state of Oklahoma where basically there was a representative, if I'm to understand this correctly, in the Oklahoma state government that proposed a tax that would that would add a 1% tax to, quote, violent video games. Now, wait a second. Isn't everything, if it doesn't come out for the Wii, or it's not a sports game, technically a violent game? Pretty much. Like, do you know of, like, that many games that are would be classified as a non-violent video game? Oh, Mortal Kombat, um, Gears of War 3, oh, wait. Yeah, just keep naming no. them, because... <laughs> like, what the fuck? But it's funny, because that's all they specify. They don't specify... The, the guy didn't specify what a violent game... Like, he didn't specify a rating. He didn't Bloody specify... Bullshit. He didn't specify. So, uh... But anyway. And basically what they proposed, okay, is that they would include this 1% increased tax, like video games don't cost enough already, on violent games, and they would take this extra money and they would donate it toward awareness. Forget this, okay? Childhood obesity, first of all. And then... Then, childhood aggression. Basically, this guy wanted to set up a committee, which is what we need, of course, is more government committees, right? And I, I just got to this article because I want to get this information correct. The committee was called, now keep, like, if this isn't the wordiest thing ever, the Oklahoma Task Force on Video Games Relationship to Obesity and Aggression. Jesus that would be the name of the committee. And I, what I thought was really funny is the fact that the, the name of the representative who introduced this, his name is William Four Killer. Now, if that's not the most ironic thing, his name is Four Killer, and he's proposing a tax, and basically, basically what this is doing, the, the, the idea behind this is that they're targeting, quote, violent video games. As a, the cause for childhood obesity and childhood aggression in the state of Oklahoma, or I guess in the country, but they can only control Oklahoma. So let me get this straight. Violent video games are the cause of childhood obesity. Don't you think that if they were going after childhood obesity, that they would tax, I don't know, McDonald's? <laughs> Or any of the other 800 fast food chains. Let me tell you something. Video games are not the sole cause of childhood obesity. Like, what the fuck? Now, I'm not going to say that they don't contribute. Because there's no question in my mind that playing games does, in fact, contri contribute to childhood obesity. Because people don't get out of their house. They just sit there all day like lumps. They don't move. Okay? They don't exercise. They just sit there and play games. But you can't target violent video games, you cannot incorporate that specific genre into childhood obesity. Why violent video games? Why not all video games? I mean, why is it only violent ones that cause childhood obesity? That correlation doesn't even make sense. I can understand if you try to make a correlation between video games, I mean, in general, but not violent video games, okay? And then, they want to talk about how it contrib how it's basically the cause of childhood aggression. So let me get this straight. You're not going to target the music that the kids are listening to. All this rap music that promotes violence. You're not going to target TV. 
for all of the violence that they portray on TV. You're not going to go after the movie company, the movie industry, for all the violence that they portray on TV, right? Just video games. Now, first of all, I'm a, I'm of the opinion that they, they, they shouldn't target any of these people. Because I'm of the opinion it's not their responsibility to it, it it it's not it's the parents' responsibility to monitor what their kids are playing or watching or listening to or anything else. Am I right about this? Yeah. It's not the media's responsibility to raise children. It never has been. I mean, that's why these games have ratings. That's why you cannot buy an M-rated game unless you're 17 years of age. That's the purpose. It's not their fault. It's also not the consumer's fault. If they're a mature consumer buying this game and they're, they're it's a video game, they understand that. It's not their fault. They shouldn't be punished because small children are playing video games that they're not supposed to be playing, and I don't know if that's causing childhood aggression. I'm not a psychologist. But even if it is, how is it everybody else's problem? Or how is it, the, how, you know what I mean? Why would you overtax the rest of the consumers because you think that games, without any kind of proof, at least they don't talk about any kind of studies that they've done, any psychology, you know, psychologic studies that they don't done in Oklahoma, they don't cite that in this article because they just feel like these games are contributing to childhood aggression. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? I don't understand why why people th would think that this is okay. I, I just think that they've, they've been trying to fucking target video games for everything, dude. Like, fucking... The, the Columbine, because, you know, fucking Grand Theft Auto's, you know, been influencing that, that time period, you know. They've been trying to fucking get, get video games for everything. And that they've always been trying to, you know, say that it contributes to violence and shit. It's the parents' fucking job to make sure their kids aren't playing M-rated games that have blood, gore, violence. That's the fucking parents' job. That, that's the only way the kids can get the games is through their parents. I and mean, am I right? I mean, the yeah. parents buy the game for them. I've, I mean... but And it's it's like... Why is it only the games that they seem to be targeting? There's violence. It's, it's there's violence right portrayed now. everywhere. It's not yeah, just it's games. Industry, you know? And I don't understand why they. Thank God. Now, just to get this clear, I'm not sure. If, I I think I talked about this at the opening of the show, but just to make it clear, this was not passed. This was defeated. By a five to six vote, so it's not even like it was a, you know, it wasn't a sweep. They won by a vote. There was one vote that decided that this was this thing. This thing wasn't going to get passed, basically. So, I, I don't, I don't know. know what to say. And I and I like I like the the. The thing by these two representatives. Okay, it says Representative Anastasia Pittman pointed out that the ta I'm reading directly from the Shack News article. It says Anastasia Pittman pointed out that the task force would be redundant since the state already has a media violence task force in the Senate. So if they already have that, why in the world would they be trying to create another task force funded by more tax dollars? That's more money that the citizens of Oklahoma are going to have to pay for nonsense to fund another committee who's going to be completely useless. And I don't want to get too political here, but I think this is what's killing us right now is the fact that it's all of this ridiculousness about creating 1,800 different task forces that pay, taxpayers have to pay for for nonsense like this. They already have a media violence task force, which I don't even know what the hell they do. Okay, but it, but then Representative Pat Ownbay, or Ownby, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, asked why video games would be singled out as a cause of obesity or aggression. Good point. Why just game? Why not the mo Why not movies? Why not music? How about you stop handing out Grammys to people who keep talking about shooting their mothers? 
I don't know. But anyway, and then this, and then the, the representative Mike Reynolds says, it's he, he's quoted here saying, it's not a good idea. We could have a task force on a multitude of reasons children are obese. Why we're picking violent video games was because it was originally attacked. I don't, I don't actually know what the last sentence means. I do not know. But he says we could have a task force on a multitude of reasons childs are obese. Exactly. You could have, you could create a task force for every single fast food restaurant you've got in your damn state. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's retarded. It just doesn't make any sense. Brought that up. Stupid. I just don't even know why something like this would be written. I don't even know why it would be entertained in a court. I I don't. I don't know, man. It just it's it's ridiculous. It's a ploy by the government, by Oklahoma government. It seems to get more money to fund more people. I don't. It's ridiculous. I'm glad it got. I'm glad it got wiped out. And then the last paragraph of this article says the bill seems functionally dead now, having failed to make it past the subcommittee stage. That's probably for the best, seeing as the Entertainment Software Association seemed ready to fight. California, which is the state in which you reside, was recently ordered to pay nearly a million dollars in legal fees for its misguided court battle, so the citizens of Oklahoma can be thankful they won't have to foot a similar bill. So your so your parents your parents' money that they're paying went into a million dollar batch of legal fees that California had to pay for a misguided court battle regarding this. I don't know. See, it's nonsense like this that, that gets everybody in financial trouble. And it's just stupid. And I'm tired of seeing video games being singled out when there's so much more in the media that supports violence. But they only want to go after video games because to them, video games, they don't care about games. They don't. Of course, they wouldn't do that because then guess what? Then. Then, the same, then these senators couldn't go home and watch their favorite TV shows where people are getting shot up. Like fucking Jersey Shore. <laughs> no more CSI, no more any of these crime shows, nothing like that. Dexter. <laughs> yeah, I mean any of this. CSI, like NCIS, Criminal Minds, none of this stuff. Of course, they don't care about video games because they don't, they don't buy video games. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the state senators and representatives in Oklahoma don't play games. Maybe I shouldn't make that assumption, but I think it's a fair one to make. They're all old fart bags. <laughs> so, of course, they're going to target a media that doesn't affect them. But anyway, I'm glad it got shut down. And this Not kind them. of stuff needs to continuously be shut down because it's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I just thought we should talk about that because... Uh, it just really aggravated me when I saw it. And it's stupid. Very. So anyway, I guess moving on from all this negativity, we need to add positivity to our show. So I want to talk to Brandon because he did something exciting today. Like I mentioned, he went in and traded a bunch of games and got a new HD camera that he will be using. So why don't you tell everybody what kind of camera this is. What's going to be going on with your new HD footage? Well, the new camera is a Nikon Coolpix L120, and uh, I'm I'm still trying to like work on it, trying to you know learn it and uh, how to make it look better on my TV. But it's pretty neat. The only negative part of it is it runs on fucking batteries. Wow, that, that's annoying. And you plug it into the wall. That that is annoying. Yeah. So I'm. I'm on the fence about keeping it or because I have my other camera I was trying to trade in, but Best Buy told me they did not have it in the system to trade in. What the hell? So I'm, I'm like, did I you, know, I was like, I just you, bought it. Like, Yeah, you just weeks. bought it from them. Yeah, no, but they don't have it in the system yet. It's, it's new. It's too new. Too new? So, yeah, so there's a two-week period where you can keep this, um, this cam like your camera. But after two weeks, you, if you want to turn it in, you have to turn it in between two weeks. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait it out, see if they have it in the system by that by the end of that two weeks, and uh, and if they do, I'll get I'll trade this in and, and get one that you can actually plug into a wall, which okay. would be ideal. 
And you do have a video up, right? A test video. Yes, but it's very... You can see fucking pixels on my TV. Okay. So that, that you wouldn't recommend people leave feedback on that to tell you whether or not they can keep it or... Oh, well, no. I mean, they can, but I mean... But it's not representative of your best work. Like, you're yeah, not representative. No, it's, it's just my first go. Right, okay. But you do have one up if people are interested, right? Shang 2 Multiplayer yeah. HD Test. So, I, I have not checked it out yet. I intend to. But it is up if people are interested. But keep in mind that it will get better as time goes on. Quality. Right. So... All right, with that out of the way, just a couple more things to talk about in gaming news, and then I guess we'll probably wrap up the show talking a little bit about, I guess, future plans on what we're going to be doing with the channel. It's, so far, it's been kind of a weird 2012, at least for me and my channel. It's been a little bit unorthodox from what I'm used to. I haven't really been in, sitting in any kind of groove like I was in 2011, just going through games, pumping them out. So I guess we'll talk a little bit about that, but... Um, as far as, I, I only have a couple things to talk about in gaming news. First of all, I see that there, I, I this has been talked about for a week or so. But look, there's free DLC coming out for Gotham City Imposters, right? Mm -hmm. And first of all, it's free, so you, you can't beat that. That's a throwback to kind of Valve, right? And their free DLC. Because sure. Valve, in my opinion, Valve is one of the best. It's not the best current game development studios for the quality of their games, how well do they interact with their fans, the free DLC. Um, but, okay, according to this article, it's already been released on Xbox Live. And this was written on February 24th, so it's a couple days old. It's been released on Xbox Live. They say it's coming on PlayStation 3 and PC soon. I don't know if that means it's out already. I haven't looked. But basically what it's going to do is a, a bunch of things. First of all, it's going to add something that should have been in the game when it was released. Which is the ability to, to join a match in progress. If you don't know, right now you cannot join a match in progress. Meaning if you're playing a game, a match, and somebody drops out, then, they're permanent, then you're permanently going to be down a player. There's no way for another player to join you mid-match. So you can literally have a match where everybody, if you're getting beat bad enough, everybody on your team will drop out, and that will be it. So that ability is going to be in the, in the game. It's also going to add a new map, which is pretty cool. I'm glad that they're adding a new map. They're adding more weapons, more gadgets, and more perks. And they're adding more costumes. Sweet. So they're actually adding a lot of stuff. Now, did they say why they released it on Xbox first? It does not say. But keep in mind that it was actually the game was actually released on Xbox a day later than PlayStation 3 and PC, so maybe this is Monolith throwing Xbox a bone, saying, listen, you know, we the game came out a day late on your system, so in return for that, we're going to give you the patch first and give the patch to the other two later. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe the patch was easier to write for 360 than it was for 360 or PC. Yeah, I guess that's, PlayStation. Yeah, PC or PlayStation 3. I guess that's possible. Yeah. I know programs are a bitch to write for the PlayStation 3. <laughs> um, it's also supposed to. It's also supposed to be. It's all. It's also supposed to fix a couple of bugs that the game's been having with lost stats and things of that nature so pretty cool i mean and it's all free so you really can't beat that so that's pretty neat and because of that i might actually be doing one or two more sets of gotham city imposters in the coming week to check out this new stuff since i do actually like the game i think it's a lot of fun and i want to check out the new maps i want to check out the new weapons and things like that um so yeah so that's news for this week, and then I guess it was about maybe 10 days ago, they have announced that Assassin's Creed 3 will be coming out this year, alright? And so basically, they're following in the vein of what they've been doing, releasing an Assassin's Creed every single year, but 
this is apparently, obviously, well, at least what they say, but we've heard this before, the end of the Assassin's Creed series, right? Like, the main, it's supposed to be the next main game. Yeah. So, keep in mind, we haven't had a main Assassin's Creed since 2 came out in 2009, and then you had Brotherhood in 2010 and Revelations in 2012, which are basically Assassin's Creed 2 Parts 2 and 3, uh, finishing out Ezio's story. Now, how do I feel about this game being released a year after Revelations? Well, I've mixed, I've mixed feelings about this. First of all, did you play? Have you played Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed what? Any of them? Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've, I've played Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Assassin's Creed Revelations I just beat. Okay, so you, you know what's going on. With it. So, yeah. so good. I can get your opinions, too. First of all, I always have an issue with the game coming out a year right after the other one, because in my mind, that doesn't leave a lot of good quality development time. Right. I mean, how how good can a game be with only a year of work? But then I say that, but then I played Assassin's Creed Revelations in 2011, and I actually really enjoyed it. A lot more so than Brotherhood, in my opinion, and that game was only worked on a year. So, right. I don't know. I'm excited that they're finally moving on, and we're going to have a different locale. Finally, we're going to have a new Assassin... I guess I don't I don't I don't know I don't know if it's gonna actually if he's gonna go back in the Animus or if you're gonna actually play as Desmond in the mock world. Now, if if they do go back in time, which which time period do you think they're gonna be? I've heard I've heard all kinds of rumors about where it could be. I've heard feudal Japan. I've heard Arthurian England. I have heard ancient Egypt. I think that would be amazing. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Except the only thing I can see a problem with Egypt being is that it could potentially turn into more of kind of the same environment that Assassin's Creed 1 was being in the Middle East. And I could foresee that possibly being a problem, so... I also heard um, the like um, Civil War, during the Civil War. Yeah, I've heard that one too. That would be pretty interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be pretty neat. But I think, I think I'd want it out of the Middle East. Yeah. I think feudal Japan would be awesome. I think you could do so much with the architecture because let's face it, that's a big part of Assassin's Creed is the architecture of the area because you're always constantly on the buildings and climbing around. And if you did feudal Japan, the architect first of all the game would be amazingly colorful. Right. Because Japanese I mean first of all you'd have trees and shit, which <laughs> a lot of fauna which you don't really have in the Middle East as <sighs> much. And the Japanese are very colorful in their designs and their their architecture is beautiful in my opinion. The Asian, the Japanese architecture. Mm. So that would be awesome. The costumes that everyone would be wearing, that'd be amazing. Uh so I think I'd either I, I think I'd like it there. I think that would be my pick for where I'd want it to be, if it could be any of them. Mine would be uh during the Civil War. I think that'd be interesting. That would be cool too. I would not mind that either. Because they, they actually did, um, I think it was at the end of Brotherhood, they actually um, set a, a location on Earth, and somebody tracked it down, and it was in a, in a field where a battle happened during the Civil War. Yeah. So, so well, that might be, it might have been an Easter egg. <laughs> it could be. Could be. I don't know. So how, how do you feel about this game coming out a year? I mean, if, if, if it's going to really be the grand ending of all, if this is what we've been waiting for, can they really, do you think they can really pull that off in a year? Well, I, what I think they did was had a team work on the, all the, like, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed Revelations, and they had another team work on the, the final ending for, um, for the, the series during the production of those other two games. I think, I think that they had an ending in mind the whole, t I think, if you want my opinion, I think they were ready to, they've been ready to make three, okay, since two was over. Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. But they but they didn't need to because they said, "Listen, we can get it we can get more money out of this. We can milk two more games out of this." Mm -hmm. So I think I think this story is a little bit different than maybe the other two because I think that they've been I think that they probably planned out the Assassin's Creed trilogy 
And here, here's another reason, okay, why I think that they're they're obviously ending it this year because the story of 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 Assassin's Creed is set to end in 2012 with the apocalypse. That's what they're trying to prevent. So, a they needed filler content from 2009 to 2012. Three years is a long time to make a game, okay. I don't think it's unreasonable. Three years. I mean, they've done plenty of games in three years, but I guess they figured that they could make a lot more money before then, and in in fact, they did. Um, but I think that they 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 planned out the whole the whole three games where they wanted the plot to go from the beginning. Right. And I think, like I said, that they probably could have got to work on Assassin's Creed Three as soon as they were done too, but they just didn't. Hmm. So they could get more money and wait until 2012 to release Assassin's Creed 3. So I I think I think they can do it. I think I think it it has the potential to be really good. I'm just really hoping that they don't screw it up. No, no, because uh, they they've done well with the uh, the you know they've proved themselves they they can do a game every year and it still be good. I, I mean, other than Brotherhood, but. I mean, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was no, okay. Brotherhood was not a bad game. Brotherhood was not by any means a bad game. The only reason I didn't particularly like Brotherhood is because I felt that it was just more of Assassin's Creed 2, which I had just played earlier that same year. Right. And I did, and I felt it wasn't it wasn't enough of a different locale or story than Assassin's Creed 2. Now the added gameplay was really cool. The multiplayer was really good. Um, you know the 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 recruiting assassins, all the innovations they made in that game were good. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel it was enough of a change. Now, Assassin's Creed Revelations, I felt, was a change. I thought that they changed up the environment. The story of Assassin's Creed Revelations I really enjoyed, with the whole thing with Altair and all the stuff. I loved the new area uh, and thought that they did a really good job with that game. I hated the puzzle shit. What puzzle shit? Right, the first person where you're Desmond. Oh, yeah. that was awful. That should have never been in the game. That I despised. That was bullshit. I didn't do all of those because I just couldn't take it, and it was not part of Assassin's Creed. The first time I saw it was in first person. I'm like, why am I in first person in Assassin's Creed? I know. I knew it was going to go downhill from there. <laughs> Other than that, though, I really enjoyed the game. Except for the multiplayer, because people don't know how to play it properly. So... I don't know. I think it could be good. I also think... Because here's what worries me. The plot at this point is so convoluted with Assassin's Creed that if they don't do a, a really good job of clearly explaining what's going on and they don't do a, a good job of clearly stating how this all wraps up, it's going to suck. Yeah, it really will. It'll be- piss me off. Because every game since 2 has just confused people more and more and more about what the hell's going on. And then, of course, the end of Brotherhood, which they did never go on to explain in Revelations. Yeah, they really didn't. So you're like, what the hell went on there? Are they ever going to talk about that again? Or, I don't know, man. Somebody just got killed, and they fucking... They, need, <laughs> they really need to do a good job, in my opinion. With, they have a lot of pressure on them, I think, with three. Yeah, they do. It's gonna be, I think this is going to be a difficult series for them to wrap up, and I think that they need to do it well. Um. Yeah, but I'm excited for the game. I really want to play it. In a way, it's a little bittersweet because it's a re- it's a really good series of games, and I'm a little disappointed to see it end. But it is time. Mm-hmm. They've run their course, I think, with it, and I and I really hope that they have a really good ending, and then just let it be. Don't yeah. try to revive it in the future. Don't try to do anything stupid with it. Just let it be. Do what the developers of Halo could not do. Yeah. Just leave it alone. That's a whole new... Th- and, and God of War is about to do it too. Oh, God. And they shouldn't. Just leave it be. Everybody wants to do a game too much. They really do. So just make a great ending to Assassin's Creed series. Do what Resistance did not do. Actually end the series in a good, satisfying way. Reward people for playing all five games that you've made, give them a good ending, and then just let it be. Let the game be a classic series, and just don't screw it up. 
Yes. And don't try to reboot it 10 years from now like they try to do with Duke Nukem and freaking Twisted Mountain. Just let it be. That's the code. That's the key words for tonight's episode. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. <laughs> they should listen to that song and really listen to the words and just accept that. During production, just fucking... Just have that shit on, show, on, on repeat. On their yes. iPods and listen to it all all day. Let it be. So anyway, that's the gaming news. Assassin's Creed 3 coming out October 30th. At least that's the preliminary date for it. So we'll be checking that out at the end of the year. So now to wrap up our episode, it looks like we're pretty much perfect with timing right now. Let's talk a little bit about what's coming up on each of our channels. Brandon, we'll start with you. What are your plans for the coming weeks? On your channel, what can people look forward to? Like over the next two weeks? Over however long you want to go. Um, well, this week coming up, um, I'm planning on doing Shing 2 campaign. I actually got that just this weekend, or during the end of the last week. And uh, just until Binary Domain comes, because I actually sent uh, Syndicate back a little late, so I'm not sure when that's going to be coming. Just a past time, I'm going to um, try and beat this Shing 2 campaign, and then the rest of the week is going to be binary domain because there's multiplayer, there's um, a story mode I have to get through, so pretty much going to be all binary domain. And then next week uh, is a free week, right? Isn't next week next a free week? Next week is a free week. So I, I'm going to have to come up with something out of my ass. You'll have weeks like that. Just wait till the summertime. Yep. You'll have months like that. Jesus There's actually like a month coming up, I believe, between the end of March and the end of April. Or at uh, least there's nothing I'm interested in playing in that time span. I'll probably just pick, pick a game and play it. I mean, Yeah, I'm going to have to find something to do. Yeah. I'm thinking Skyrim Marathon. but Yeah, that'd be good. See what happens with that. So anyway, with me, for the next couple weeks... Uh, this week coming up, I'm, I am going to try to do Binary Domain since I have decided to not do Azure's Wrath. I'll talk about that in the channel update, which will probably be coming later tonight, Sunday. I'm announcing it first here that I'm not going to be doing Azure's Wrath. I'm going to be trying to do Binary Domain. Here's the thing. I do have a game slot open, so it doesn't make a difference whether or not they get Twisted Metal back. So that game should send to me, but I don't believe I'll be starting that game until Thursday because... Or even later, maybe even on the weekend, because which doesn't matter because it's a free week, like you said. But I have a pretty test-riddled week this week. I have a genetics test on Tuesday, followed by a very important and very worrisome midterm for my organic chemistry lab, which this test will kind of decide whether or not I'm going to pass this course. Fun. It's great. I'm looking forward to it. I'm nervous as hell. And I should be studying right now instead of doing this, but I'm not. Because this is more fun. <laughs> yeah, it's more fun. So, Binary Domain, of course, like I said, it, probably, it won't even get here until Wednesday at the earliest. But Wednesday, I will be neck deep in shit studying. Oh, God. And then the midterm, I actually believe, is from 6 to 8 p.m. Thursday night. 6 to 8 p.m.? I believe so. And I have classes all that day, too, so by the end of that, I, by the end of that exam, I'll probably come home and be done. And not want to do anything except lay down, maybe read a book, and just pass out. But that weekend, I should start Binary Domain, and then, of course, the week after is a free week for me, like I said. So we both said we're both not doing Mass Effect 3 yet, because we need to beat the first two. Yes. So I will be either finishing up what I need to do with Binary Domain, possibly playing some of the multiplayer with Brandon if he hasn't already completed it and done be done with it at that point. And then uh, trying to, I will probably at that point, I assume we'll have Syndicate back from Gamefly, that way I won't have the worry of any late fees, and I can do the single player and review that game as well. Which the single player will have to basically pull a rabbit out of his asshole if it wants to get anything better than like a four. So, because okay. right now that's about what the co-op is—it's about a four. Yeah, pretty much. Because it's 
it has a game breaking bug on Xbox and it's retardedly brutal hard. Impossibly hard. Impossibly hard. Kind of like well never mind. Yeah. I'm not, not, it's not, gonna... not gonna go there. I think everybody got the idea of that. But anyway. And then of course the week of the release date of March sixth. I wish everyone happy mass affecting. That is a verb. Yeah. If I can make that a verb. I honestly wish I could be a part of that game during release week because I know it's going to be crazy. But I do not want to cheat myself out of the experience of playing the first two before I go into Mass Effect 3. So I wish everyone fun on their space odyssey. Trying to <laughs> save the world from the Reapers. I actually pre-ordered that game. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to be getting the game for my birthday in May. Because I do want to own that game because I think it's going to be awesome. I do want to own a copy so that in the summer when I can play it, I will own the copy and we'll be able to play it and get all the, the benefits of owning a copy of Mass Effect 3. So I hope everybody has fun. I hope the Reapers aren't too much of a pain in the ass. I hope you well, destroy them. Well, we could them. do the co-op for that game, couldn't we? We could. Possibly. Possible. Let's we'll see. With game slots and things like that, but uh, but yeah. So happy Mass Effect thing. Everybody enjoy. Be safe. Kill the fucking Reapers. But bottom line is, at the end of that week, there will be episode five of Voodoo's Brew, where we'd like to get a guest on. We have one lined up. We have a guest that we'd like that we that we're targeting to get on the show. I don't think it'll be a problem. He's actually online right now. <laughs> So we should have a guest on episode 5 of Voodoo's Brew, and what we're going to try to do is not have an hour and 50 minute interview. We're going to try, Brandon and I will try to get just a couple of topics pulled together, try to make it short and concise, maybe about 45 minutes of a normal episode, and we'll bring in our guest for maybe the last 45 minutes or so of the show, and uh, have a chat and talk about some cool things with him. So... Brandon, do you have anything else that you'd like to finish with? Um, fuck Cuba. Okay, alright. <laughs> That's respectable. That's one of my running thing. I'm gonna have to, um, what's insult your, the country. What's your every country for tonight? Kind of a, what is your, what is your country tonight, sir? It's fucking Cuba. Fuck Cuba. Cuba's not a country. Well, fuck that island. Fuck. <laughs> I guess Cuba is technically. I don't know, we're it's making ourselves look really it's stupid. It's basically a country. We're making ourselves look really stupid that we don't know this. <laughs> Just fuck that little island. Good Cuba. old college education. Yeah. Cuba's pretty weird because it's actually... It is a country. But I believe the United States has... What, like sanctions on it or something? We own a part of Cuba. We have something going on with Cuba. Just fucked up. Fuck it. It fuck is. Cuba. It's not... It's not nice. Not a nice country. Or not island. Nice to be or there. sanction. Or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with it. I feel stupid. I do know that it is a country. But I could have sworn that the U.S. had some kind of influence in Cuba. Uh, I don't know. But they All I know is it was part of almost the end of the world during the Cuban They did have crisis. some crazy missiles down there that were threatening us. Yes. So fuck them. <laughs> fuck them hard. Okay, so I'm looking this up because up I don't want to feel stupid. And light it. But it says that in May 20th of 1902, the Republic was separated from the United States. So they are their own. So they're kind of like they're kind of like North Korea. No, they're not like North Korea. Well, yeah, didn't they cut themselves off from... Well, yeah, I guess technically. But I don't think they're threatening us imminently with nuclear weapons. They did at one point. Yeah, but that was a while ago, and that was from the Russians, which we've already talked about. Great. So, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting mixed up, because I, I, Puerto Rico is, is the United States territory, not Cuba. Yeah, Puerto Rico and... Puerto Rico is the territory. Guam. And Guam. Is it Guam or what it is, is it? Guam. Those are our territories. I do believe we have sanctions on Cuba. I don't think we trade with them anymore. No. Or something like that. 
just like Iran, we em- we embargoed their oil. So now our oil prices are going through the fucking roof. Yep. Indeed. Uh, what are you going to do? Nothing. Just keep paying. Keep funding. Just bend the, over, pull down the, your pants, and take it. Keep funding the committees to watch all these violent video games and how they cause childhood obesity. Yes. Keep funding them. Not that box of Twinkies, it's the video game. It's not the Big Mac that you just bought your child. It's not the Happy Meal. It's not the Chicken McNuggets. It's not the Frosty from Wendy's. It's fucking Mass Effect 3. It's not the Belly Buster soda that you got from your local gas station. <laughs> belly Buster. It's Call of Duty. Yeah, it's Call of Duty. Modern Warfare Dick. <laughs> so anyway, without doing anything that will make us look like further idiots that we don't know what we're talking about as far as Cuba or anything else. I am Voodoo51292 or Josh as my friends call me. Since my listeners are my friends, you may call me as such. My internet's shutting off. Fuck Cuba. <laughs> That's true. Brand's internet will be gone in about seven minutes, so we perfectly timed this. So I'm Voodoo51292. He is Brandon. Bboy 9 fresh Check Fuck him you out, youtube.com slash bboy9fresh. Yes. He's so fresh and so clean. And I'm nine. And he's nine years old. Yes. His balls just dropped early. No, they haven't dropped yet. They haven't dropped yet. He's actually speaking through a voice changer. Yes. Actually, he's Justin Bieber. I'm Justin Bieber with a bigger dick. Only not as good looking. Yeah, not as good looking. And he doesn't impregnate 20 year old women. No, I don't. Only 18 year old women. 18 year olds and uh, people that are I can illegally have sex with. <laughs> okay. So before we say something that's going to get us arrested, <laughs> I'm Voodoo51292 again. He's Brandon. YouTube.com slash Voodoo51292 is where you are right now. If you're listening, YouTube.com slash Bboy9Fresh is where you can go to troll Brandon, leave him hateful comments, unsubscribe to him, and check out our friend Travis that we did the co-op gameplay of Syndicate and Mass Effect 3, and we'll be doing Raccoon City with at youtube.com slash tgpgaminghd. Thank you very much, fine folks, for listening. I hope everyone has a good evening. And fuck you, uh. And yes. (laughs) That's Brandon. Pay him no attention. No, that was Josh. Okay. (laughs) Good night.